Today, we also confer an honorary degree upon Pierre Lassonde in acknowledgement of his accomplishments as one of Canada's foremost experts in mining and precious metals and for his commitment to educating the next generation of global leaders. I'm delighted to welcome him to our convocation. To present our distinguished candidate, I now call up on Dean Andy Rymark, Faculty of Engineering. Pierre Lassonde. Before I introduce you to our honored guest today, I would like you to take a moment and think about the link between three diverse words, engineering, entrepreneurship, and business. For each of us, these words likely mean many different things. Perhaps technology, design, or structures come to mind, or leadership, development, and innovation. When I think about these three words, I think of Pierre Lassonde. Dr. Lassonde is a highly accomplished professional engineer, a successful investor and financier, entrepreneur and company builder, a generous philanthropist and a national leader in Canada's mining and business communities. Not only is Dr. Lassonde a highly accomplished engineer and businessman, he is also an advocate for educating future engineers to have exposure to business, leadership and innovation. He believes that Canada's greatest resource is its people, especially its youth, and has invested in their future through providing opportunities for young people to become leaders. Born in St. Hyacinth, Quebec, he studied at the Seminaire de St. Hyacinth, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in 1967. He then earned an electrical engineering degree at École Polytechnique de Montréal and an MBA from the University of Utah. His early career included working at Bechtel in San Francisco and then Rio Algom in Toronto. Beginning in 1980, Dr. Lassonde was president of the gold division of Butel Goodman & Company, directing its highly successful gold investment fund for a decade. Then in 1982, he co-founded Franco Nevada Mining Corporation with his longtime business partner, Seymour Schulich. The company was based on an innovative royalty model that had not been applied to precious metals mining before. Today, Dr. Lassonde is chairman of the corporation, internationally known to be one of Canada's foremost experts in mining and precious metals. Dr. Lassonde has been recognized through awards in the mining industry, including Mining Man of the Year in 1997, Developer of the Year with Seymour Schulich in 1998, Engineering Medal of the Professional Engineers of Ontario in 1999, and the Inco Medal in 2001. His many successful business accomplishments and generous philanthropic spirit led to Dr. Lassonde being appointed a Companion of the Order of Canada in 2002. A strong supporter of post-secondary education, Dr. Lassonde has made a significant impact at many universities in Canada and the United States including Western University. As a philanthropist, Dr. Lassonde has supported engineering education at York University, Ecole Polytechnique, and Western. Entrepreneurship at the University of Utah and mining engineering at the University of Toronto. He generously supports the art through the Musée National des Beaux-Arts de Québec. And through the Lassonde Family Foundation, Dr. Lassonde supported the construction of Western's first green building, the Claudette Mackay Lassonde Pavilion. The Lassonde Family Foundation also supports a number of Western engineering scholarships. Supporting student success and fostering entrepreneurship is nothing new for Dr. Lassonde. His work began years ago right at home with his own children, uh, Christian and Julie. Christian Lassonde received a Bachelor of Science from Western in 1997 in computer science and a Bachelor of Engineering Science in 1998 in the field of electrical engineering. He also received an MBA from the University of San Francisco in 2005. Julie Lassonde is also a graduate of engineering, holding a degree in civil engineering from Queen's University. Both Christian and Julie are innovative leaders in the areas of engineering and business. Dr. Lassonde's engineering expertise, business mindset, and generous philanthropic nature have made an impact at home and around the world. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and in the name of the Senate, 
I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, upon Pierre Lassonde. By virtue of the authority vested in me as acting counselor, I admit to you to the degree of Dr. Law's honoris causa. Congratulations, Dr. Lassa. Thank you. On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumnus, Dr. Pierre Lasson, to address convocation. Thank you, uh, President Chakma, uh, Dean Rymack, faculty, staff, honored guests, graduate, parents, good afternoon. I must admit, listening to uh, the, uh, my introduction there, I thought that it was going to go longer than my speech. Um, so, but that being said, um, Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon you can choose to change the world. Well, all of you graduating today must have believed uh, that Mandela was, was right. Otherwise, why would you have chosen to spend you know, four long, if not more, in some case, arduous years are filled with too many sleepless nights to complete your degree. And now, now you think your troubles are over. Well, unfortunately, they invited a, a French-speaking individual to give you a commencement speech. And I'm here to tell you that commencement in French, commencement, means your troubles are just starting. As a society, uh, we are in the middle of huge disruptive technological breakthroughs that will affect the world's labor and financial markets, as well as the social contracts between governments and their people, employers, and employees. Now think of this. Nine of the 10 most valuable high technology companies that exist today weren't around when most of you were in diapers, okay? That's about 20 years or so. You decided to get an education to change the world. Well, the world is already ahead of you in a way that the world is changing at an increasing speed. You know, I just think of four companies. Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicle. Facebook. The world's most popular media owner creates no content. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer in the world, has no inventory. Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. That would have been inconceivable 10 years ago. These companies have destroyed tens of thousands of cushy, mind-my-own-business, pencil-pushing jobs while creating entirely new markets, opportunities, and employment. And that's what you're going to be facing. The opportunities have never been greater for those of you who seek to create change that will benefit our society. However, there is one element in all of this that hasn't changed. And it's not likely to change for quite a while. And that element 
is us, mankind. And we come in all shapes and colors and flavors. Well, take me, for example, okay? My 10-year-old daughter, who is here today, Laurel, says that I have a custard physique. Well, that's shape, color, and flavor all in one. You know, we all want to be different, and yet we crave for the same things. A roof over our heads, food on the table, safety, freedom of expression. Mankind, many shapes, colors, and flavors are not so different after all. As Nietzsche, the famous German philosopher, put it, if you have a why to live, you can bear any how. So I can't tell you how best you are going to go change the world. That's up to you. But what I can and will tell you are a few of my rules, the Lassonde's rules of life. You will note that I'm very partial to family and community. And that's because they will have more impact on your happiness than money, fame, or anything else that you can think of. Family and community, that's really where it all starts. So my rule number one, say thank you. As Canadians, I think, you know, I think that we say excuse me, I'm sorry, more often than we say thank you. These two little words are the best way to tell people around you that you care. You care about them, that you love them. And that goes for everyone, you know, for, for you graduates here today, for your parents, without whom you wouldn't be here today, to all the way to the waitress at Tim Horton who got up at 5.30 in the morning to serve you coffee so you could stay awake for your exam. Rule number two, you'll like this rule, I assure you, throw a party. It's my way of saying, celebrate life. Each of us is on this planet for a very short time. So make sure that you create the memories that you will live on. So whether it's your parents' 25th wedding anniversary or your kid sister 18th birthday or graduation, be there for them. Celebrate life with them, with your friends, with your family. It's very important. Rule number three. Have no regrets. Live your passion. It's not so much the outcome that matters, but whether you tried. It's not so much the destination, it's the voyage. So give it your best and make sure that you can live at peace with yourself. You know, to my mind, there's no sadder sight than an old person full of regret. You just don't want to be that person. You just don't want to be there. And it reminds me, you know, you take a guy like Steve Job, who took a course in calligraphy, because he just thought that that would be interesting. And it changed the world, because the products that you see in Apple, the design, the fanatical, you know, belief that he could change the world through design came from that one course that he took in calligraphy. So you want to take a course in calligraphy and change the world? Go ahead. Do it. Have no regrets. Rule number four, feed your soul. Einstein once said, the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. So if you don't want to be replaced by a robot one day, you'd better feed your soul. Go out there and learn and enjoy music, the arts, poetry, travel, whatever works best for you. Now, rule number five, I've only got two left. See for yourself that the earth is round. You know, we're very fortunate in the fact that Toronto is considered the most diversity-wise, the most diversified city in the world. But we are still in Canada. Go see the way the rest of the people around the world live. It will do a great deal to you any prejudice you may have, to the respect you may have for other civilization, to the understanding that you will get 
It's a wonderful thing to be able to go visit. And, you know, I've been to over 100 countries, and I never cease to be amazed at the random act of kindness that strangers do to me everywhere I go in the world. It's not just Canadians. You'll see that. Go and try it for yourself. And I got to tell you, the only place I've ever, ever been robbed is in France. Go figure. Okay? <laughs> Rule number six, leave a better world behind. Now, the impact that seven billion people are having on our planet today is very different than 200 years ago when we only had one billion people, or 100 years ago where we had two billion. So in 100 years, we've gone from 100 to 200, then the next 100 from two to, two to seven billion. So it's our shared duty to leave as little an impact as possible on our planet and to pass it on to our children and grandchildren, a world that they will be proud to live in. I will also, when we talk about leave a better world behind, remind you of the three T's of philanthropy. And those three T's are give time, give talent, and give treasure. So when you think down the road, where you came from, who got you your degree, make sure you think of Western, okay? And finally, my last rule is to keep my speeches to 10 minutes. I've reached that mark. So I will conclude by wishing you the very best in life. Enjoy. Thank you for your attention and good luck. Thank you.